Fox is America's election headquarters as we look for winners and losers in the Republican presidential debate last night. One target that rarely escapes conservative fury and did not last night, the news media. Both Donald Trump and Ted Cruz especially hammering the New York Times. Listen. The New York Times is reporting that you failed to properly disclose a million dollars in loans from Goldman Sachs and Citibank. <laughs> Thank you for passing on that hit piece on the front page of the New York Times. And yes, I made a paperwork error disclosing it on one piece of paper instead of the other, but if that's the best hit the New York Times has got, they better go back to the well. Let's talk about it with our media panel. Judith Miller, a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter, author, and Fox News contributor. And Lynn Sweet, Washington Bureau Chief at the Chicago Sun-Times. Welcome to both of you. Judy, you used to work at the New York Times. <laughs> what did you think of that paper becoming the punching bag for a couple of candidates last night? Well, John, I think it was predictable because the only thing that unites all of the people on that stage is their loathing of the New York Times and the mainstream media. And it's a predictable laugh line. It's a predictable, you know, villain boo hiss. But I just have to point out mm -hmm. that the New York Times, for all of its faults, has done more investigative reporting against Hillary Clinton on Hillary Clinton. Got it. Got it. They oh, they not only disclosed the email scandal, but they looked very long and hard and early at her connection with the foundation and the potential and perhaps actual conflicts of interest. We don't know yet. They have consistently looked at all the candidates. And I'm sorry, Mr. Cruz, but yes, you are running for president. And if you fail to properly disclose a one million dollar loan from Goldman Sachs, Mr. Outsider, one of the most inside institutions in this country, the New York. Times is going to report it. So if he wants to deflect criticism of that action, he did so well last night. But we all know what's going on here. So sticking with you for the moment, Jody, you're saying that you think the Times in particular is even handed in its examination of Republican as well as Democratic candidates. I think they try and do both. I think my problem with the New York Times has been that too often its editorial bias in favor of liberal Democratic candidates winds up on the front page in the terms of placements of stories. But that's not what was going on last night. And we have to distinguish the two. Any newspaper that attacks any of these candidates is going to be mocked and attacked back. But that's our goal. We're big. We're like the guys on that stage and the one woman in the junior varsity debate. We can take it. Well, it certainly brought a lot of applause from the, uh, from the assembly there in North Charleston, Lynn, when, when Ted Cruz bashed the New York Times. Does he, does he have reason? Does he have ground? No, no, and no. <laughs> He's in the big leagues. The senator, as he admitted, didn't file his paperwork properly. So it's the, the problem for him, the political problem, that he was trying to dilute and divert by bashing the messenger, you know, that'll last maybe a night, uh, was that his persona is Mr. Populist, Mr. You know, he, he was elected with the help of the Tea Party movement, but he went to Princeton, he went to Harvard. His wife works at Goldman Sachs, which makes them wealthier than most people with access to, to uh, low interest loans that most people don't have. That goes against the image and the narrative he's building, and if he can't get it together to just report that paperwork properly of how he runs a campaign. What makes you think he could run the country? Well, and, and then there was that moment where Donald Trump uh, asked about his Chinese business dealings, Lynn, <laughs> said, that's the New York Times. They're always wrong. I mean, even Donald Trump, who lives in New York, wants to take on the New York Times. Because it's, a, it, it's an easy punching bag. It, 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 is, it, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. And one other thing that happens all the time, particularly in the debate last night, is a conflation between the reporters who are straightforward and trying to just do political journalism and tell you things about people running for the presidency and the opinion columnists who get to do what they want. Right. And also, I would add, John, that, and Lynn, that, you know, <laughs> amazingly, this morning, the New York Times pronounced Ted Cruz the most commanding performer of the debate. I mean, that's the uh, biased New York Times. Yeah. So I found that very interesting. Right. Donald, and, and Donald Trump, we just saw him uh, live from Urbandale, Iowa, where he's doing some campaigning. He's probably already railing about the New York Times on that score. Go ahead, Lynn. <laughs> right. Well, I would like to think that if anyone came to a reporter, if that story came to light, now, and I don't know how it did, but certainly if I started doing a deep dive, 
jive on a candidate, you always look, if you're, if you're looking at the paperwork, you would have gone to the financial disclosure, and it would seem reasonable that someone could put this together. One other thing it shows, this should have been caught by the Cruz campaign. This should not have come as a surprise. Uh, mm. Maybe the, you know, so, so this also gives you a little insight as to how the campaign then couldn't figure out a way to maybe get ahead of that story. We, so there's a lot more things going on than a paperwork error, as Senator Cruz put it. We report, viewers decide. Lynn Sweet, Judy Miller, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.